Thank you, sir. Uh, U.S. intelligence has said that Russia tried to interfere in the last two presidential elections and that Russia groups are behind hacks like SolarWinds and some of the ransomware attacks you just mentioned. Putin, in his news conference just now, accepted no responsibility for any misbehavior. Your predecessor opted not to demand that Putin stop these disruptions. So what is something that concrete, sir, that you achieve today to prevent that from happening again, and what were the consequences you threatened him? Whether I stopped it from happening again, he knows I will take action, like we did when this last time out. What happened was we, in fact, made it clear that we were not going to continue to allow this to go on. The end result was we ended up withdrawing them. They went and withdrawing ambassadors. We closed down some of their facilities in the United States, et cetera. He knows their consequences. Now, look, one of the consequences that I know — I don't know. I shouldn't say this. It's unfair of me. I suspect you may all think doesn't matter. But I'm confident it matters to him, I'm confident it matters to him and other world leaders of big nations. His credibility worldwide shrinks. Let's get this straight. How would it be if the United States were viewed by the rest of the world as interfering with the elections directly of other countries and everybody knew it? What would it be like if we engaged in activities that he is engaged in? It diminishes the standing of a country that is desperately trying to make sure it maintains its standing as a major world power. And so it's not just what I do. It's what the actions that other countries take, in this case Russia, that are contrary to international norms. It's the price they pay. They are not — they are not able to dictate what happens in the world. There are other nations of significant consequence, i.e., the United States of America being one of them. Mr. President, just a quick follow on the same theme of consequences. You said just now that you spoke to him a lot about human rights. What did you say would happen if opposition leader Alexei Navalny dies? I made it clear to him that I believe the, the consequences of that would be devastating for Russia. I'll go back to the same point. What do you think happens when he's saying it's not about hurting Navalny, this, all the stuff he says to rationalize the treatment of Navalny. And then he dies in prison. I pointed out to him that it matters a great deal when a country, in fact — and they asked me why I thought it was important to, to continue to have problems with the president of Syria. I said because he's a violation of international norm. It's called a chemical weapons treaty. It can't be trusted. It's about trust. It's about their ability to influence other nations in a positive way. Look, would you like to trade our economy for Russia's economy? Would you like to trade? And by the way, we talked about trade. I don't have any problem with doing business with Russia, as long as they do it based on international norms. It's in our interest to see the Russian people do well economically. I don't have a problem with that. But if they do not act according to international norms, then guess what? That, will not, that only won't happen with us. It will not happen with other nations.